Okay, this is the ladder problem. I don't know what's made that up. I don't really know what it's called, but it comes up quite a bit. So the idea is there's a ladder and it's leaning up against a wall. Now at the top of this ladder is a wheel. Why is there a wheel at the top of the ladder? Because it makes the problem easier. Uh, so we can do one maybe later where there's not a wheel, but the wheel means that there's no friction up here. Now at the bottom of the ladder, it's on the floor, there is friction. And so on this ladder, there's a human, a person, and this person goes up the ladder. And it's, it's not all the way to the top. And so here's the person. So the question is, um, you know, if you can imagine if this was on ice, the ladder would just go whoop and flip down, which is a pretty, pretty cool experiment, but don't do it. Uh, so the question is, what's the minimum coefficient of friction down here so the ladder won't slip? And that's what we're gonna calculate. So I, I picked some values here just because I know everyone likes numbers. Uh, so I have the length of the ladder, 4.2 meters. The, uh, the distance up the ladder, S, is 3 meters. The mass of the person, 65 kilograms. The mass of the ladder, 10 kilograms. I know it's a heavy ladder, but just, just indulge me, please. Please indulge me. And then this angle right here is 65 degrees. So this is an equilibrium problem. It's an equilibrium problem because we want to find the forces for a rigid object that is at rest. So that means three things. It means number one, F net X equals zero. The net force is in the X direction zero because acceleration is in the X direction zero. F net Y equals zero again. The acceleration in the y direction is zero. And then finally, the torque net about any point is zero. This any point is something that uh, gets passed over a lot, but if this is not, if this is in rotational equilibrium, I'm using a pen now, then it's not rotating about this point down here. It's also not rotating about the point up here. So really you can pick any point along this that you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. So you pick one that's easy for you. So let's do this. Let's just, just write down these. Oh, no, no, no. First thing we need to do is draw the, the free body diagram. So I, I am going to take one little shortcut here, but here is my ladder. So what forces do we have acting on it? The first is the long range force. So we have the gravitational force acting at the center, and I'll call that MLG. Remember that the center of mass is the center of gravity. So this is the location at which you can pretend like all the gravitational force acts and you can treat it as one force when really the gravitational force pulls on all parts of the ladder. But it's the same as if it was just pulling right there in the middle at the center of mass. Okay, now what else is touching the ladder? Well, up here, the wall is pushing and there's no friction. So this is gonna call, uh, it's gonna be pushing this way. And this floor is gonna be pushing up also. So these are both normal forces. They're normal because they're perpendicular to the surface. That's the way surfaces push back. So this one pushes up perpendicular to the floor. This one pushes uh, horizontal perpendicular to the wall. Uh, finally, there's, one, there's two other forces. The next force is the frictional force. There's a static friction force between the bottom of the ladder and the wall. And so this pushes that way. Uh, I, I can't really fit it right there, so I'm gonna put it like this. That's a static friction force. And then finally, this person pushes down the ladder. So if you draw a force diagram for just that person, I did this before, then I have N3 MPG. And those two forces are balanced. So uh, that means N3 is equal to MP. G. So the ladder pushes up with the force N3. But if the ladder pushes up on, a, on with the force N3, then the person pushes down with the force equal and opposite to that. So that would actually be pushing down with the force opposite of that, which is opposite of that, which is NPG. I know. It's a bad thing, but it's just too much work to put something else. So NPG. This is not. This is not. This is not. It's not. It's not the weight of the person. It happens to be equal to the weight of the person, but it's not the weight of the person. It's actually a normal force. Oh, I feel better seeing that. But it's important, right? We can't just make things up. Okay, but that's it. I have one, two, three, four, five forces. So let's write down 
uh, the sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, which of these forces are in the x direction? I have this one and that one. So I'm going to say F net x equals N2 minus the friction force. And this one's minus because now I'm dealing with the component in the x direction, which is in the negative x direction. Okay, so that's good. Um, actually, I can also write this as, uh, remember that the friction force is equal to the coefficient of static times n1 max. This is the maximum friction force, okay? It's normally less than or equal to, but we're at the, we're finding the minimum friction. So this, is the, this has to be equal to. That's another key point. So this is going to be equal to uh, n2 uh, minus mu sub s times n1. And remember, we're trying to find that coefficient of friction. I don't know n2 and I don't know n1, so I'm pretty, I can't really go further on that. Now let's do the net forces in the y direction. This is going to be n1. And then I have minus mpg minus mlg equals zero. So I can go ahead and solve this for n1 and put it up here. So I have n1, which you can't even see. Oops, sorry. And then I have, uh, sorry, mpg plus mlg. So now I can put this in up there. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So I get, uh, actually I'm gonna solve this for mu sub s. So I get mu s equals n2 over n1, and then n1 is that. So I get n2 over mpg plus mlg. And that's the coefficient of friction. But I don't know n2. Okay, so I don't know two things in this equation. I know I know everything but mu s and n2, so I can't solve this. So I'm going to need another equation, and that's where we come with this one, the torque. So I'm going to pick, because I have vast, vast, vast experience in physics, I know that I want to find an expression for n2. So if I pick this as my point that I calculate the torques, then that n2 will not be in the equation because it will not create a torque. So if I pick this down here, then I won't have N1 or the friction force. So that's what I want to do. I want to pick this as my point O. So I'm going to say torque net O equals, okay, let's just go start up here. So remember that torque equals uh, R F sine theta, or you can write this as R perpendicular F, or you can write this as R F perpendicular. So all those are the same. And I have to take into account if it's, if it's clockwise, it'd be a negative torque. If it's counterclockwise, it'd be a positive torque. So this one, is it going to be clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, this would make it rotate that way. So that's going to be counterclockwise and positive. So I'm going to say positive. And now I'm going to use this force and this distance right here, because see now they're perpendicular. That's R perpendicular right there. So if this is L and this is theta, then this is going to be L sine theta. So I get N2 L sine theta. That's the torque due to that one. Okay, now what about this one? This is going to be a negative torque because it wants to make it go, wait, that one makes counterclockwise. This one's going to, yeah, clockwise. Wait, clock, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm gonna I want to find this R perpendicular this distance. So this is S and that's theta. This is S cosine theta. So I get minus MPG S cosine theta. Now for this one, it's gonna also be in the clockwise direction. So it's minus uh, MLG. This distance is L over two. L over two cosine theta. Uh, now, these two don't exert a torque because they have a zero R. Okay, so now I want to solve for N2. So I'm going to add this and this to both sides. Okay. 
Okay, now I can divide by L sine theta, and I get N2 equals MPG S cosine theta plus MLG L over 2 cosine theta, all of that over L sine theta. So this, I have, I can, I know all these values, so I can get an expression for N2. That's what I wanted. And then I can plug that in up here. Okay, so this goes here, and this goes there. Now, I, I could get this expression up there, but I, I'm not going to do that, because I think this is a, a solved solution. And in fact, I know that you want the numbers. I gave you numbers at the beginning. So I actually uh, put, this is what's great about using Python. I'm actually going to use uh, trinket.io. Uh, so I have a built-in Python there and I'll give you the code to it. So I can enter in this equation in Python and then enter this equation and just use the the, the variable into I calculated down here. So it makes it a little bit easier. When I do that with my values, I get mu s equals what do I, I think it's 0.3 something. 0 0.3197, that's 0.3198 actually. Now that's good because it's less than one. Uh, the other interesting thing, once I put this in the calculator, what if I, I can try extreme cases? What if I do this? What if this is 85 degrees? You can't even see that. Then there should be less friction, right? There needs to be less friction because of two things. One, the ladder pushes down harder on that surface. Uh, and two, you don't need as much torque to keep it from slipping. So, yeah, so if you put in 85 degrees, you can recalculate this, and I get like 0 0.05, so that's good. Okay. There you go. Okay. That's it. Why are you still here? I'll talk to you later.